powering on your PC from anywhere in the world. It's something that you always wanted. Today we're making a very interesting DIY project. I will show you one of the best methods to power on your PC from anywhere in the world by accessing a link. So basically you can power it from any device that have access to internet. A phone, a tablet, another computer or any other device like that. Stick with me in this video and I'll show you how it's done. For this project you need a Wemos D1 mini module, which is very cheap, around $3, and a relay shield for it, which is around $2. I would like to tell you that you don't need a soldering iron, as I know many of you run away from that. But if you want me to start with a lie, don't worry, you don't need it. In the description I have placed every information needed along with a website article for this video. The D1 mini module is basically a tiny computer on which we will upload a code using a specific software. It has Wi-Fi so it can connect to the internet using your home router. The relay is actually a button controlled by the module. So when the module receives a request from the internet, it triggers the relay and the computer powers up. Because the relay is mechanical, it's like you're pressing the actual button. It's very reliable as if your computer freezes, you can hard reset it. The wake on LAN method, which is the most common use out there, have the downside that if the computer freezes, you cannot do anything. So we're starting this tutorial with HTTP method, or this is how I call it, because we're making an HTTP request to power on the computer, or simplified with access a link. So first thing first, after your module has arrived, you need to solder the pins, as they come separately. Please don't get discouraged, it's easy task. We firstly arrange the pins in their position and see how we need to solder them. Place the module on top of the relay to match the text from both ends. Now one by one, even if it's your first or million soldering, you'll have this done in no time. Great, you have unlocked soldering. Now what we need to do next is to upload some code to the module. And for that, we need to install Arduino IDE software on the computer. As many of you may already have it installed, I've made a separate video with step-by-step -step installation instructions. So pause and click on the link from the description that shows step-by-step -step installation of Arduino IDE and resume to this video. Open up Arduino, plug in your module, select D1 Mini from Tools board and from Tools port select the port of the module. Most of the times it's the only one available. Copy the code from the website and paste it into Arduino IDE window. Change the Wi-Fi SSID and password according to yours and put something random on web password as this is for the unique link on which you'll enter to power on your computer. So make sure that something strong. Now click on upload and wait for a bit. The code will compile and upload to your module. Immediately after your sketch is uploaded, clicking on this plus sign button will open up the serial monitor and you can see if everything's alright. Make sure the baud rate is set to 115200 so you get readable response. You will see if it's getting connected fine and also the local IP address assigned. 
If you don't see anything, hit the reset button of the module so it will reconnect to Wi-Fi and show you again the connection data. The first moment of truth. Type in your browser the module IP address and port following slash short press power button question mark key equals and type the password you've set on web password. You should hear the relay clicking fast. Now if you access the long press power button link, you will hear the leg clicking with a delay of 5 seconds. This is useful only for hard reset when the computer freezes. I've also included an ultra long press power button just to be sure and it has a delay of 9 seconds. Now the last part. Connecting the relay to motherboard. Please make sure you disconnect the power cables before doing anything. Let me fastly explain how a computer powers up. So basically there are two wires split up by the case button. When you press the button, it makes a connection between them and the computer powers up. We will not interfere with the case button functionality in any way, as that is not smart. So we will just give extra functionality. Now all what's left to do is to make the relay do a quick wire connection. So we can do it the hard way, the isolating a bit of the case button wire, which I generally don't recommend, or if you have this kind of male-female pin cables, it's very easy to adapt them, making a sort of Y cables. This way we can make everything plug and play and we don't need to modify anything inside the computer. So I'm de-isolating both wires to extend them with another wire that will go to the relay. soldering a bit to be sure I have a good connection. Please make sure you have a good isolation, as in the computer case, they may touch things randomly and you don't want that happen. The relay shield has three connection terminals, one is common and the other two are normally open and normally closed. We insert the two wires on common and normally open. So when the relay is triggered, it closes the circuit connecting the wires, exactly what happened when you press the physical button. Now the new wire we've just added goes to the relay. Please make sure you put a module in a case or something so it doesn't touch things inside. Now the female end of the wire we've just modified will go to motherboard pins in the place of the button switch cable and the male end to the button switch cable. With everything in place and connected, let's do the real test. Plug in your module and type again in the browser the link for slash short press power button. Perfect, the module is working as supposed. Now to make it work from the outside of your local area, enter in your router and open the port 8085 for IP address of the module. Or if you have specified other port in your sketch, open that one. Every router has different admin dashboard area design and the opening port should be under port forwarding page. Now if your ports are opened, you should be able to power on your computer using your public IP. Go to www.showip.net to see your public IP and use that instead of your local IP. Now on your phone you can simply power on the PC accessing the public IP link from your browser. Or much easier, install HTTP request shortcuts app and create a new regular shortcut. Write your public IP URL and now with one click I can turn on my computer. Simple as that. And the possibilities are unlimited. For example, you can now integrate with IFTTT webhooks and use it with your Google Voice command. I also know that many people can't open their ports. So in the next video, we'll get more deep into coding and configuring as we'll connect to an MQTT cloud. Does it work to make this DIY project? If you ask me, yes. It is very cheap and even if you are a beginner, you can do this pretty fastly. Also, it's a very good opportunity to start with IoT devices. Hope you've learned something useful today and if you're interested in this kind of stuff, like this video, ask questions in the comments and of course, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. It will give me positive feedback so I know I need to make more content. See you soon.